All waves of this type are forms of energy. We hear sounds when vibrations travel through the air to our ear. The vibrating surface imparts energy to the air, and the air carries this energy in the form of compression waves. As the drum head rises and falls, so the air is compressed and rarefied with the same frequency. At low frequencies, the amount of energy in the waves is small. but it's enough to blow out a candle flame. This drum head is vibrating 128 times every second. The frequency of the vibrations determines the pitch of the note in the musical scale. As the pitch rises, the vibrations become more frequent. This tuning fork is middle C. It vibrates 256 times per second. The second fork is an octave higher, upper C. It vibrates 512 times a second. A loudspeaker vibrates in the same way as the original source, imparting energy to the air. The loudspeaker is quite efficient at low frequencies, but as the pitch rises, it becomes less efficient. cycles per second, 8,000, 10,000. Above these frequencies, its efficiency falls until it cannot be heard at all. We can hear sounds over 9 or 10 octaves, from 16 cycles per second to between 16 and 20,000 cycles. Above this, we cannot hear vibrations, although they are still physically the same. Frequencies above 16,000 are therefore called ultrasonic waves. Ultrasonics is a new science, but examples of the use of ultrasonic waves can be found in nature. Bats are one example. They have special organs which can make vibrations up to 70,000 cycles per second. Their ears can hear these vibrations. By emitting ultrasonic waves and listening for the reflection, they can avoid obstacles, like this beam. Dogs, too, can hear ultrasonic waves. This was discovered in the 19th century by Sir Francis Galton, who devised a silent whistle now called the Galton whistle. We can hear only the blowing noise, but the dog can hear the whistle up to nearly a mile away. Man has applied ultrasonic waves for such uses as probing through the sea. In the same way as the bats, an instrument on the ship projects a beam of waves, and another instrument listens for the reflection. An ultrasonic generator is lowered into the water to transmit the signals. The power is switched on, and the reflections are recorded on this machine. Even the presence of a shoal of fish can be recorded in this way. The wider use of ultrasonic waves became practical with the development of new types of wave generator. A loudspeaker is a sound wave generator that works by electromagnetism. A fluctuating electric current flows through the speech coil and produces a fluctuating magnetic field which draws the coil and cone backwards and forwards, so producing vibrations in the air. As we have seen, the loudspeaker is efficient at low frequencies, but not at high frequencies. This type of wave generator, called a magnetostrictor, is more efficient at high frequencies. The whole power from this unit is fed through this small magnetostrictor. It also operates by electromagnetism. A fluctuating current flows through the coil but in this case, the core actually changes its length, expanding and contracting under the influence of the magnetic field. 
This is a special magnetostrictor to demonstrate the effect. The core is of nickel, and around it there is a solenoid winding to provide the magnetic field. This dial indicator will measure the expansion of the core when the current is turned on. The current is made to fluctuate slowly. It magnetizes the nickel, which expands under the influence of the magnetism. For most purposes, this effect is put to use by driving the magneto stricter with alternating current at ultrasonic frequency. You can see the end of the core vibrating as the current is turned on. Magneto strictors are most efficient between 5,000 and 50,000 cycles per second. The third type of wave generator is the crystal transducer. This contains a section cut from a crystal. The crystal changes its dimensions under the influence of an electric field applied to the opposite surfaces. The loudspeaker is efficient between 30 and 10,000 cycles per second. The magnetostrictor between 5,000 and 50,000 cycles and the crystal transducer between 250,000 and 2 million cycles per second. At these frequencies, vibrations can be produced carrying energy thousands of millions of times greater than sound waves from a loudspeaker. At low frequencies, sound spreads in all directions with the same energy. But at higher frequencies, the loudspeaker sends out waves more in the form of a beam, like a lighthouse. As the frequency rises, the energy is more and more concentrated in the beam, which can be reflected, as this sound is, from the opposite wall. This speaker is vibrating at 4,000 cycles per second. But at ultrasonic frequencies, the beam becomes even more narrow, and with a crystal transducer, which will vibrate at a million cycles per second, the ultrasonic waves can be beamed in straight lines. To photograph this beam, we must use shadow photography. The transducer is placed in water, since air cannot carry such high frequencies. A reflector is placed in front of the crystal to set up standing waves. Between the camera and the tank, a ground glass screen is placed on which to throw the shadows of the ultrasonic waves. The room is darkened, and a mercury lamp is directed so that it throws a shadow of the crystal and the reflector onto the screen. The power is turned on, and shadows of the ultrasonic waves can be seen as vertical lines on the screen. They are projected from the crystal to the reflector and back again. Notice there are no waves in the water beyond the reflector. Now let us see the waves appear as the current is turned on. With a frequency of one million cycles per second, the distance between these lines, which are the shadows of standing waves, is 0.72 millimeters. Here is the same thing much closer. The crystal vibrates and sets up waves. These waves travel through the water as far as the reflector and then back again, setting up standing waves in the water. Let us see the effect which can be produced by this beam. A concave mirror is introduced into the beam and the waves are focused at the surface of the water to produce a fountain. A shadow photograph shows how the waves are focused by the concave mirror.
They focus at this point. The beam can be reflected and still has enough power to produce a fountain. See how narrow the beam is. We saw that sound waves carry energy. At this distance, there is no effect on the candle flame. But a trumpet concentrates the energy so that it blows out the flame. Ultrasonic waves can be concentrated in the same way and carry much greater energy. At 15,000 cycles per second, concentrated by this glass funnel, they carry enough energy to set light to a cigarette. solid piece of metal shaped like a funnel will concentrate the energy in the same way. This magnetostrictor drill concentrates so much power at the tip that it will drill through the hardest substances. Here a piece of glass is going to be drilled with this shape. Carborundum particles in water are used to chip tiny fragments off the glass. This is the drilling process. In this shot from beneath, you can see the shape of the drill as it chips its way through the glass. This is a shot through a microscope. See the tiny pieces of glass being chipped away. As the drill comes through the glass, the carborundum slurry comes out on the other side. Since the drill does not have to rotate, holes can be cut to any shape. Ships' propellers often suffer pitting of the surface, sometimes so badly that the blade fails. The study of ultrasonics has shown this to be due to the rapid formation and collapse of myriads of tiny gas bubbles in the water. This is called cavitation. The same process can be shown happening with a magnetostrictor. This is an ordinary piece of glass coated with aluminium. The glass is placed in the water about half an inch from the magnetostrictor. The power is turned on, and almost immediately you can see the aluminium being eroded from the surface. Let us see the power turned on again. You can see the cavitation bubbles tearing at the surface, and particles of aluminium dancing in the water. On the right-hand side of the screen, a large hole is being torn in the aluminium surface. A useful effect of cavitation is in forming emulsions. For example, water and oil will not mix in the normal way. The oil remains on the surface. But if a magnetostrictor with a long probe is put into the tube, particles of each liquid are thrown into the other. By using the cavitation effect, oil and water can be mixed easily. Ultrasonic waves are fundamentally the same as sound waves, but of much higher pitch.
They can be produced by new types of wave generator, the magnetostrictor and the crystal transducer. They can be beamed in straight lines, reflected and focused. They carry high concentrations of energy. Ultrasonics is a new science using modern equipment. But the equipment is basically simple and within the scope of a school laboratory to make. Not all the effects shown in this film could be obtained with such simple equipment. But interesting experiments can be carried out in this field, a field where there are still discoveries to be made.